We've been clear. Uh, we believe that the, uh, the imposition of uh, tariffs on steel and aluminum, uh, Canadian products uh, going into the United States, uh, is absolutely not appropriate. We, uh, we see ourselves as being an important part of the U.S. supply chain. We see that uh, we're an important part of the uh, U.S. And, and NATO security alliance. Uh, so we, uh, we are clearly putting forward the position to uh, the United States that we believe that Canada should be exempt from any uh, tariffs on steel or aluminum. Uh, that will be uh, certainly our ongoing uh, goal of communicating that, of course. And what we've said is we will, uh, if required, we will be firm in our response, uh, appropriate but firm, uh, by taking measures that would uh, respond appropriately. I'm not going to opine on what someone else's tactic may or may not be. What I can say is that uh, we don't see that, uh, that uh, linking a, a steel and, uh, and NAFTA is, uh, is going to help us to get to uh, an agreement uh, that can hopefully improve the terms of NAFTA for, for all three countries. Uh, uh, Bloomberg, go ahead. But do you see, in that context, do you see the U.S. now as posing a danger to the global economy with trade sanctions and tax cuts that are aimed to destabilize other nations? I think there were two things in your question. One was around um, trade, and the other was around tax cuts. Uh, I, I think we've been very clear. We think that uh, any tariffs on uh, steel or aluminum that the United States is considering, Canada should be exempt. We're a staunch and important ally of the United States, so we are part of that uh, security environment. With respect to tax cuts, uh, the United States has taken a decision to change their corporate tax rates. Uh, of course, that's uh, their decision. Uh, we believe Canada continues to be uh, very competitive on multiple fronts. As I've said, uh, we are carefully looking at changes that uh, the United States has made, and of course, considering the regulations that they're writing right now to ensure that Canada remains competitive. Uh, Gemma from Canadian Press. Uh, this morning you were talking about uh, how this dispute between Alberta and BC is part of democracy. Does that kind of messy bit of democracy that you were speaking about earlier, how does it impact businesses who are looking to build and invest in Canada? We uh, believe that it's, uh, it's important to enable our, uh, our resources in this country to get a market price. We've uh, said clearly that we uh, believe that the uh, Kinder Morgan pipeline makes sense in order to uh, reach that objective. Uh, I expressed this morning what I would express uh, in any context, and that's that in order to get to an answer uh, in our uh, democracy uh, to get projects built, we need to uh, consider the complexity of that. That's why we've put in place an approach to environmental assessment that allows uh, people to bring forward their issues uh, so that we can actually get those issues out on the table and get to a conclusion on projects in a way that makes sense for, for business, creating greater clarity around timelines and uh, the ability for people to invest, remembering that what we're trying to do is improve uh, the uh, economic outcomes for Canadians. And uh, that is our ultimate goal. Uh, meaning that we should be trying to figure out a way to uh, have projects that meet up to the, uh, that goal and that are in the public interest uh, move forward in an expeditious fashion. Go ahead. Follow up. Does that interprovincial conflict make us look bad to, on the world stage to investors? I think investors look at Canada with a very positive light. They look at Canada as a place where we have the rule of law. They look at Canada as a place where we have strong institutions. They see that we've weathered economic challenges. Uh, they recognize that we've got, over the long term, a, a political environment that's been very successful in keeping a, a long-term coherent uh, approach to trade and to uh, business. Uh, so as international investors look to Canada, I think they see uh, positives. Democracy is a positive which sometimes presents some, uh, uh, you know, some messy aspects. That's positive. Okay, we have uh, two more questions. Uh, uh, Mr. Minister, if, uh, uh, if Canada and U.S. were to engage in a trade war after this uh, steel and aluminum uh, tariff, uh, since they are 10 times bigger than we are, is there a chance that we can win a trade war with the United States? I think we're, we're making sure that we take uh, 
all discussions around trade with the United States uh, in a measured way. We're working to negotiate uh, the terms of a renewed NAFTA, uh, putting forth our positions in a way that uh, are constructive, uh, looking for answers that will improve our outcomes here in Canada and in the United States. Uh, similarly, when we talk about uh, tariffs, we're presenting the fact that uh, the imposition of tariffs, steel, aluminum tariffs, if they were on Canada, that in our estimation would help uh, no one. It would not help U.S. consumers. It would not help U.S. businesses. It certain, certainly wouldn't help us in Canada either. It wouldn't help our security environment. I think from our perspective, the way to deal with a partner, to deal with our neighbor, is to be constructive. We're going to continue to be strong allies in the United States. We're going to continue to be neighbors. And uh, we're taking uh, that uh, as our frame to negotiate for better outcomes.